Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and I know you think my show plays on YouTube, but it actually plays on CakeTube. I should start CakeTube, and I'll be just like Susan. Susan is the CEO of YouTube, and today is her birthday. And I've never said her last name because it's so hard to say. She actually made a YouTube video of herself saying it. My name's Susan Wojcicki, and no one can ever say my name. In fact, when I was Susan Wojcicki, I won't do that to you, Susan Wojcicki, because I too am a CEO of CakeTube. I can't just make Susan a plain old cake. Susan's cake is gonna be checkerboard on the inside, so I need 12 pounds of Yo's Ultimate Vanilla Cake Batter and six pounds of Yo's Ultimate Chocolate Cake Batter. I dyed half of my vanilla batter a nice cake tube red. Your YouTube red is nice, Susan, but I think this is a little bit nicer, shade nicer, perhaps. And I dyed my chocolate batter black. I removed my cakes from their pans and I level them and cut off the caramelization from the bottom. For all the details on how I divided up my batter between my six square cake pans, you can go to howtocakeit.com or click the link below. Now I'm gonna cut all of my cake layers in half horizontally. Susan and I have a lot in common. She's the CEO of YouTube, I'm the CEO of CakeTube. She is wealthy. I have a wealth of flour, sugar, butter. I'm now gonna cut off the caramelization from all the sides of all of the cakes using my square cake boards that I made to guide my knife so I end up with perfectly square cake layers. She has five children. I have one child. There's a lot there. We're women. She, she sees the competition. I'm gonna focus on the top tier of Susan's birthday cake for a moment, which will have a checkerboard pattern on the inside. So I take all three of my six inch square cakes and I use templates to cut two inner squares out of each cake layer. So there's a lot of inner squares. A lot of inner squares. <laughs> and they're not becoming secret chambers. I need to alternate the colored cake squares within each layer. In total, you'll have six layers, and I promise when we stack these in order, when we cut this cake open, you will have a checkerboard in the YouTube colors. For Susan Wojcicki. If I really say it wrong, are we gonna edit this out? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. So Squeezelot's gonna come in and help me simple syrup all of these cake layers so that they're nice and moist. Speaking of Sir Squeeze A Lot, today is the last day of my holiday weekend sale. You can get any two items at howtokickit.com, including Sir Squeeze A Lot, for 10% off. Just use the promo code two scoops. I put the six patterned cake layers in the fridge to chill while I'm assembling the first cake. It's time to start layering my bottom tier. This tier will be striped on the inside. And I'm gonna stack and fill the cakes with Italian meringue buttercream in the following order. Black, red, white, black, red, white. There you go, Susan. Wojcicki. Once this layer is assembled, I crumb coat and chill it. Insert music here. And move on to assembling my checkerboard cube. Now this, this is intense. I need, you know what I need? I need like some Susan Wojcicki CEO focus. Cube cakes are hard because they have to be exactly the same width, height, and height. Width, height, and height. <laughs> it's tough, it's a tough one. Width. <laughs> I thought you were channeling Susan. <laughs> This is why there's only one Susan. <laughs> Cube cakes are really hard because they have to be exactly the same width, height, and depth. I begin to stack and fill my cakes in order, looking at the outer color, and I really have to be careful. I even measure part way as I'm filling this cake, just to make sure it's becoming cuby. It's stressful. Okay, my cube is looking cuby. It's time to crumb coat and chill it. I hope you guys have seen my crumb coat and chill apron. This is a fan suggestion. We took it one step up and made an apron. I should have worn it when crumb coating and chilling this YouTube cube. Time to ice both of my cakes. I'm gonna use a really tall bench scraper to help me, but you still need precision. I know Susan Majitsky knows what I'm talking about. I wish I could use a ruler 
to ice cakes. Hold on, shh. I'm having a fantasy. Just give me a minute. Once I'm happy with my icing job, I chill my cake, but to be honest, whenever I'm icing a square or a cube cake, I usually ice it three times just to get it right. Precision. I will be CEO of Cake 2. I will be CEO of Cake 2. Woo! It's time to cover these cakes in slabs of fondant and keep them nice and square. So for my bottom tier of cake, I'm gonna roll out five slabs of white fondant, nice and thin, and make sure that they are all wide enough and tall enough to cover a side of the cake. And then for my top tier, I'm gonna roll out five slabs of red fondant in the same manner. I hope that you'll be rolling fondant with me in real time at Camp Cake, my very first live stream baking event. I'll be happy to share all my tips and tricks with you. Camp Cake is happening July 23rd and 24th. Please sign up. The link for registration is below. Um, I gotta let you guys in on a little secret because not only will you be baking with me live if you register, but Jocelyn is gonna make an appearance on Camp Cake. She has agreed to decorate a small cake and give it to me for my birthday. I want a candle, Jocelyn. <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> So am I. I'm gonna cover my two cakes with my slabs of fondant and I'm gonna kinda of go back and forth so I can cover them two sides at a time and chill in between. Starting with my white cake, I measured the height of my cake all around and then I cut two of my slabs to be the right height and attached them on opposite sides of the square. I put that cake in the fridge and do the same thing with my checkerboard cube cake, adding red slabs to two sides. Now I'm gonna to return to my white cake and I'm going to trim the excess fondant off the side. Surprise! I like to use a ruler. When my sides are nice and trimmed, I'm gonna add the next two slabs of white fondant to the two remaining sides. But I made a mistake, people, and I feel bad admitting that when I was supposed to be in CEO mode. I forgot to re-measure the width of those sides. So I trimmed my fondant too short. Aww. Susan wouldn't do that. This is some CEO pressure. Like I need a boardroom to sit in and people to discuss this with. Sasha, Jocelyn, let's go. So to rectify this, I took the strip of fondant that I had cut off way too soon and I placed both the slab and the strip onto the cake side by side. The seam wasn't that bad and because I know I'm adding a pattern to this cake, it will all be covered up. Little royal icing, little pattern. Susan will never know. Unless, of course, she actually has time to watch this video. I'm gonna put my white cake back in the fridge to chill, cover the two remaining sides of my red cake, chill all of those sides, and then I'm gonna cover the tops of I use a little bit of buttercream and then I take my final slab of white fondant and I use a set square to cut two of the sides perfectly straight and perpendicular, line them up on top of the cake and then of course I use a ruler and a sharp knife to cut the other two sides completely square. Got it? Now do it again with the red cake. It's decoration time. I begin by rolling out two thin sheets of white fondant, one thin sheet of red, and one thin sheet of black fondant. I'm gonna cut my red and black sheets of fondant into three quarter inch stripes, and then I'm gonna take my two sheets of white fondant and I'm gonna mark halfway so that I kind of have four separate sheets. I want to decorate each of these four sections with the black and red stripes. So what I do is using a little bit of water on the back, I lay down a black stripe, a red stripe right against it, and then the same amount of space I leave white, and then lay down again, black stripe, red stripe, space, black stripe, red stripe. I repeat this on the remaining three sections of my white fondant. I bet you Susan likes rulers. For sure. I wish I could ask Susan so many questions. I think she'll answer in the comments. How do we tag her? How do you tag the CEO of YouTube? Then I trim off all of the excess white fondant along the edge of the first black stripe and the last red stripe on each of the four panels. I'm gonna kinda create like pixelated stripes. Yep, that's what I'm gonna call them. Sounds like something Susan would like. 
So what I do is turn my striped sheets of fondant the other way and cut three quarter inch stripes in the other direction. So now every single stripe has black, red, white, black, red, white, black, red, white squares. It's time to apply these stripes to all four sides of my cake. I begin at the outer edges and work in. Working inward, I apply my stripes at various heights on the cake. It's not quite a checkerboard because it's not even, but you know, it's pixelated. We should pixelate this. Can we do that? <laughs> pixelate me. Orhan, pixelate me. <laughs> With the leftover colored squares from my strips, I fill in all of the gaps at the bottom, completing the pixelated pattern. So yes, I did continue this pattern all around the other three sides of the cake. And as you will see on the time lapse that I put up on my Facebook page, That's there was it. a lot of time lapsing. Um, I kind of felt like the sides were so fancy and the top was just white. So I rolled out some black fondant really thin and cut a nice square that would fit perfectly on top. Still leaving a white border, but just adding some oomph. For the top tier of this cake, I wanted to make a real YouTube symbol. Well, at least a symbol to me. Here at How to Cake It, we were so excited to get our YouTube gold play button. So I recreated that but smaller and less gold. I dyed some gum paste a deep yellow and I cut myself out a YouTube play button template. You know what my template was? It was a sticker from a bag I got at the YouTube Creator Summit. I just, it's all coming together. I was supposed to get that bag. And I cut that triangle out of a piece of hard cardstock, which is basically just a thicker, firmer paper. Then I take that little cardstock triangle and press it into my play button. After I made my play button, I let it dry overnight. And the next day I brushed it with a thin layer of vegetable shortening and then brushed it, you guessed it, with gold luster. Get ready to assemble this cake. I picked up my top tier of cake and flipped it onto what would be the back. And then I glued my play button on and allowed it to dry. As the CEO of CakeTube, I combat gravity. You do combat gravity? I try. <laughs> I don't win, but I still try. What I'm gonna do is insert some wooden dowels into the bottom tier. Once my dowels are in, I spread a little bit of royal icing on top, and then I take out my red cube cake and quickly pick it up and turn it right side up with the gold button facing forward. I'm not done. Would Susan be done? No, she would not be done. She'd be like, what else can I do for you two? So I used a sharp knife and a ruler to cut squares that will then represent my like three dimensional little cube pixels. It's cubes on cubes on cubes. Then I glued some of the cubes together to make shapes like this and I lined them up around the cake and a few on top. And just sort of a random yet cubed pattern. You know what that calls for, right? Cube drop. Oh, there's no sound. I think it even bounced. Hold on, watch this. Double cube drop, just cause I'm the CEO. Happy birthday once again to Susan. Uh, sorry, just having a CEO moment. My name's Susan Wojcicki. Yeah. Susan Wojcicki, happy birthday, Susan. Thank you for everything you do for YouTube and especially for YouTube creators. I love it here for one. You know, Susan is getting this cake for her birthday. So I just want to tell you, I'd really like two million subscribers for my birthday. I mean, Susan's subscribed, so you should just subscribe. Susan, should we take your jet, Susan? Yeah, I think we should, because I don't have a jet. I can cake a jet, and we'll eat it on your jet. I'll be back next Tuesday on CakeTube.